the Odia discovered <clears throat> that this business of sailing along the coast was just too cumbersome. And I suppose somebody who went down and that it was much, much easier to in fact, rather than try and go along the coast to Southeast Asia, it would be much easier to actually sail down south using the, the winter monsoon to Sri Lanka and then use the currents that are equatorial currents to go across to Sumatra and Java and so on. So now what happens, it's quite an interesting change in the orientation of Indian trade with Southeast Asia. Earlier it was through uh, Thailand, the Isthmus of Kra to Vietnam, now it suddenly reorients going south to Sri Lanka and then swinging across using the current to, um, to Java, to Bali, to Sumatra and so on. And there also you see this explosion of Indic culture uh, happen uh, at this time. Now what is interesting is while it is all very obvious in, if you go to you know, Bali or Java, etc., the en enormous amount of uh, in Indian uh, influence uh, clearly suggests, shows you how much uh, cultural flow was going back and forth. But very often in our, uh, in, in India, we tend to assume that this was due to much, much later Tamil influence. That is not the case. The real great pioneers of the Eastern Indian Ocean are really the Udiya. And it shows through in many other things. The slang word to this day used for Indians in much of Southeast Asia is the word Klinga. Of course, now it is, has a slightly derogatory uh, meaning. But the word Klinga or Kalinga, obviously derived from Kalinga, uh, is the slang word used or the word used for Indians. Um, the word for West in all Malay languages is Bharat. So you can see that there is clearly memory on the Indonesian side. Of why? They have even named their, uh, their country after India. So there's clear memory on uh, the Southeast Asian side. Now what is the memory that we have on our side of that period? And interestingly, it actually lives very much uh, in many, many ways which till very recently, we, even though it was right in front of our eyes, we didn't um, fully appreciate. Now, the, one of the biggest festivals of Odisha is Kartik Purnima. Now, what happens in Kartik Purnima? In Kartik Purnima, <coughs> basically, when the Purnima happens, you're supposed to get up before sunrise, and particularly the women and children are supposed to go to the river or sea or water body and put a small boat with a diya in it into the... Uh, uh, into the river or, or water body. Now, what is the significance of this? The significance of this is the following. You see, around about Kartik Punyama, what happens? The winds change. They stop flowing from south to north and begin blowing from north to south. So what is going on? So basically, this is the point at which the Odia sailors used to go off on their voyage. So that was basically what are they doing? The family is saying goodbye to the sailors as, and the merchants as they are setting sail. And about at the same time in Katak, even today, there is a fair called Bali Yatra, which literally means the journey to Bali. Just think about this. This is real civilizational memory right in front of our face. And I have witnessed this myself a couple of years ago. I went and witnessed a fascinating uh, 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 event uh, on the beach in Konarak. Uh, they, in fact, do these plays, and there's a story of Tapoi. Those of you who are may know this story. But um, it's a story about a young girl who is left behind with her sisters-in-law when her, her brothers and father go on this long voyage, and how her sisters-in-law mistreat her, and uh, then she prays to <coughs> uh, goddess Manas, uh, Manusha, and you know the, 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 the brothers come back. Uh, just in time before really bad things happen to her and rescue her. Anyway, it's, it's a folk tale, but it's quite clear that this linkage with foreign travel, with its maritime trade, is very, very alive in day-to-day -day, uh, cultural uh, motifs.